Hi guys, Billy back and this time we're going to be looking at the Necker Frankenstein's monster, Raphael. Now this is a really interesting sort of mix of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the Universal Monsters. And it, I think they've had a very interesting sort of idea with these guys. And you would think that the four turtles would be like the four main monsters, but that's not entirely the case with these guys. I think Leo or someone like that is going to be like Igor or some, you know, there is a very interesting sort of way they're going with these. And I think that means that because the four turtles aren't going to be the four main monsters like werewolf and Dracula and stuff like that, it means that they are actually going to be doing other characters in the line, hopefully, sort of like Splinter might end up being the werewolf. I would really like to see a massive were rat as Splinter. That would be awesome. But for the moment, this is the first and only figure they've released in the line, and we're going to take a look at him today. And as you can see, the box is really, really nice. We've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles up here with the Universal Monsters logo. Raphael was Frankenstein's monster. It's got this lovely spot gloss print on there. Ultimate action figure. A picture of the figure right there. Then on the side, Frankenstein's monster. All the logos and all the necker you need. And then on the back, they've got this really sort of cool, kitschy style poster. It's alive! Frankenstein's monster has been shell-shocked and all that kind of stuff. It looks really fun and I'm actually looking forward to opening this guy up. And then on the side here, yeah, you can see that's Raphael. That's going to be, I believe, Igor Leonardo. And I'm not sure, is that Mummy Michelangelo or Donatello? And you can see there's going to be a Bride of Frankenstein here, and you know that's going to be April O'Neil. So they are looking to stretch out and expand this far further than just the four turtles as Universal Monsters. And I'd be really interested to see where they go. And then, of course, you've got a Velcro fastener on here. We pull that open. Inside, we've got a promo pic of the figure in its entirety on the left, and then on the right, we can see that that is the figure just inside the box with the size and extra hands and whatnot. Okay, that is it. It's a really nice presented package. This is the kind of thing, if you were walking into a shop and you just were, you know, looking for a new figure to buy, maybe in a comic shop or something, I'm pretty sure this really nice sort of packaging would catch your eye. So the packaging is a nice touch from NECA. Okay, let's open them up and have a look at the figure in its entirety. Uh, this is the only frustrating part for me, are these sort of like fasteners they put. It holds the figure in place and really nice, but they're really fiddly to try and cut. And then when you actually do cut them, you lose all sort of like um, stability inside the box, which is a bit of a shame, but that's, that's a very minor niggle. Let's get him out. Okay, so here's Raphael Frankenstein out of the box, and you can see he doesn't come with a buttload of accessories. He comes with six hands, two already on him, two fisted hands, and two side gripping hands. And they're all very nicely painted. You can see there they've got this big monstrous sort of hulking lumpiness to them. There's lovely texture in the hands with that dark wash going in to highlight all those imperfections. And you can see the fingernails have been painted very well. Yeah, it's a very sort of like grim, dark version of uh, Raphael. You can see like he's got a split in the hand and it's being held together by those metal staples that are well painted. Yeah, I have to say, I really like the hands. I think they look great. I like these big sort of monstrous hands that he's got coming up here that make him look like he's actually like, I don't know, very expressive, like rah kind of hands. And he comes with these two sigh and uh, these are really nice. They actually have like the real sort of like Frankenstein science sort of equipment. Looks like he's made these out of parts that he found in the lab, which is really cool. You can see he's got those electricity rods and things like that. And then he's got like this sort of lightning shape to the blades themselves, which is uh, what, you know, Frankenstein is known to be born from, born from lightning kind of thing. And there's also like a silvery dark wash going over them to make them look dirty. And if you want to put these on this guy, you can have them gripping in his hands, or you can just have these sitting inside these sort of chain restraints just here, out of the way, and they look really quite cool. But um, yeah, as far as accessories go, it's not a lot. In fact, the, uh, the figure is the main source of the uh, detail, because if we come in, we can see that head sculpt. Oh, it's pretty grim. It's definitely Raphael, you know, he's got that slightly purplishy, reddy, dirty, sort of bandana on 
You can see he's just got these pock marks on the side of his face just here with the stitches around his chin. Horrible sort of manky teeth. Sort of really dull, sort of lifeless, almost soulless eyes in there. And again, his hair has that sort of Frankenstein flat top that you would expect. I really like that. And then we come down to the bolts in his neck. And they actually got a purpose this time. You can see the bolts are sticking in his neck with those staples. And then one of them has sort of like a cable running through all the way around the back here to some sort of equipment where you can see there is a sort of dial and you can see there's actually cracks and damage inside the dial and it's dirty. But you can see the needle sort of pointing downwards like it's producing energy. I really, really like that. I love that sort of detail. It's because most of these things will be facing from the front. Sometimes when you turn them to the back, you actually get a lot more detail and it really impresses because they know you're not gonna be looking at this guy from the back a lot. So when they actually still take the effort to put that detail in, it's really nice. And then you can see he's got that big bolt on the back of his shell there with the chains running through. And I think these are real metal. They feel real metal. Or they're, they're like a really strong plastic, but they're really weathered as well. You can see all the rusty dirt going through the chains. And then all the shell is cracked and mottled. And then we've got like a bit of his shell has broken away because it's rotted away. He's sort of using New York sewer lids to uh, staple it onto the side of the shell to cover in that big gap which is really nice sort of Ninja Turtles detail. And then on the back, we can see all that texture in the trousers. Again, he's still got stitches down here. And then he's got his feet. He's got weird little bolts in his feet, which is a, which is a strange little detail. But then he's got these big blocky feet there that actually help him stand up really well. Because this is the kind of guy, because he's so top heavy, this guy could swan dive off your shelf or plant on your glass shelf very easily and break it. So it's nice that they've actually been able to give him big clumpy feet because he is very stable and he stands up really well on his own. You see he's got his Ninja Turtle knee pads there. This is sort of the iconography of the characters. So they've kept, they kept these in so you recognize them a lot better. We can see he's got all that texture inside the uh, jacket here. It's all chipped and broken and frayed around the collar. He's got another little dial here, exactly like the one on the back. Again, slight cracks in there, slight sort of dirt around the screen. It looks really good. And I love this little plate bit here. They didn't have to put that in. And the details on this guy are fantastic. Articulation wise now, his head can turn like that and like that. It's not a lot. It's a bit stiff, but again, this is a NECA figure. The new figures from NECA, they tend to be a lot tight to begin with and then they loosen up over time. And he looks down, not much. And he looks up a little bit like that. He's kind of a lumbering lump. He doesn't move that much, do you know what I mean? Even though he's a Ninja Turtle as a monster, he's still Frankenstein. So he's gonna be a bit of a blocky lump and not move that well. You can see the arms go up to about there. There is a double bend in the arms that gets you 90 degrees roughly because this part here stops it from getting any further. There's full rotation in the wrist and then the hands can come forward and back on a hinge. There was also a little bit of swivel here and there in the forearm, but there is no bicep swivel from what I can tell. There's virtually no articulation in that upper torso, which is to be expected, mostly because that shell on the back restricts it, but also he's also got this big suit sort of piece on the front that stops it from having any sort of uh, articulation ability there. So then you come down and then you got all the articulation comes from the legs. The legs can go up about that high. There is a bend in the knee, but it's not massive. It's, uh, it's okay, it's not great, but it is, there's enough there for some sort of like posing going on. And then of course he's got generous amounts of anticle pivot and he's got a hinge joint in the feet that goes down about that far and goes up about that much. And obviously you can see there's tiny little flakes of paint coming off, not from the figure, but actually from inside the joint here, because when you're moving it around, there is paint stuck in these joints. That's why I always recommend with necker figures, warm them up to begin with, get a hairdryer on those joints so that you can lightly flex them forward and back and break loose any of that excess paint that's sort of stuck in the joints. And then you'll have a lot of an easier time posing necker figures around. It's not always great because obviously you just want to be able to take these things out of the packet and play with them. 
but unfortunately because of the way NECA produces their figures and the amount of work and paintwork they put on them usually most of the time they don't have time to do that final step of getting the paint out of the joints again so just warm them up and move them around and you've actually got yourself usually a fairly nice articulated figure but obviously be careful with them they are adult collectibles they're not like designed to be thrown around the room as kids toys these are specifically designed for adults to buy and display overall this is a really nice sort of oddity released by NECA it sort of mixes Ninja Turtles with the Universal Monsters since the beginning Ninja Turtles has always been a little bit derivative in their ideas it comes from the fact that when they were first uh, imagined by Eastman and Laird they were sort of like they were covered in the goop that blinded Daredevil and that ended up you know leading off into other avenues for them to riff off like the hand are uh, you know were changed to the foot for the uh, ninja turtles and things like that and then the cartoon really took it on board and they actually used to try and sort of take influence from a lot of horror movies that were out at the time or just before like um, Attack of the Killer Pizzas with that big uh, pizza alien monster thing in it that was a xenomorph wasn't it completely 100% a xenomorph and then you had Baxter Stockman who was a scientist who turned himself into a fly Casey Jones actually had the hockey mask on you can't say that wasn't influenced by Friday the 13th and Jason Voorhees so it to me this isn't a surprise Ninja Turtles mixed with Universal Monsters is for me a logical step and I think NECA have done a really good job at realizing that and mixing the two together because if you like Universal Monsters and you like the Ninja Turtles then you're probably gonna like this line however I will say it is not a priority line for me or for anybody else who likes the Ninja Turtles first and foremost I'm gonna collect the animated series Turtles and the 90s movies Turtles those are the guys for me those are my lines that I go to every single time as soon as they release a set I snap it up straight away but if you have a little bit of money left over in the year after that then these guys really are a sort of nice side and they will stand out in the collection they will be like a slightly strange oddity of a, a, a line in the Ninja Turtles waves so for me they are definitely a must buy because they will sort of diversify my Ninja Turtles collection a lot however if you are someone who is priority in the 90s movies or the cartoon versions these these are mostly secondary and you don't have to buy them but honestly I do hope people do buy them because I'd like to see this line go further because at the moment they've sort of shown three and teased a fourth which I think is uh, the Bride of Frankenstein April O'Neil it's got to be isn't it that's the logical conclusion there and I honestly hope they do Splinter who would probably be a were rat I'd lose my mind this big hulking Splinter with like werewolf fangs and teeth and claws and oh yeah yeah um I'm getting ahead of myself because that might not even happen but yeah I'm really excited for this line I think it's great I love the details in this guy it's such a shame that you'll be posing him from the front because he is actually just as interesting from the back as well this is absolutely definitely worth picking up the quality of the sculpting is there the quality of the paint apps is definitely there I love the style and design that they've gone with the articulations okay it's not amazing we both know that but for me he ticks a lot of boxes for me to want to put this guy in my collection okay guys hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe if you do me a favor now if you can get that out of my cave i'm going to put this guy on my 1990s movie ninja turtles shelf i think for the meantime but as i pick up more and more of these guys they're gonna have to find their own place in my room thanks a lot guys bye bye